Hey guys, welcome to part two of this beginner's course. The focus this time is on this piece of plastic known as a guitar pick. Uh, guitar picks come in various shapes and sizes and various thicknesses, so I'm just going to walk you through a few basic ideas uh, to help you get started with this integral part of guitar playing. First thing I want to talk about is the thickness of guitar picks. Uh, generally, you're going to get rigid, harder, stiffer guitar picks, um, which are good for intricate playing and uh, they really come into their own when a guitar player needs accuracy for fast runs and things like that and the other side of the coin is uh, floppier picks uh, which I actually don't have any floppy picks because I don't need them because I don't use them um, so I've got a special Ben Higgins made cardboard uh, pick which I'm going to use to show you uh, the properties of these type of picks right with uh, picks like this, this is uh, two millimeters thick okay that part there, that's two millimeters thick and um, with stuff like this it's really useful because when you hit the string, when your pick hits the string like this like that, I'm just going to mute the strings here so you can just hear the sound the pick doesn't change its structure, it doesn't change shape now if you imagine something which is floppy when that hits the strings you can actually see it moving there, you can see it changing shape. Now, uh, if that happens with floppy picks, then what good are floppy picks? Well, floppy picks are brilliant uh, for things like strumming. And the reason being is because, this, because the pick actually moves and flexes when you hit the string, there's hardly any resistance when you actually pick the strings. That makes it really easy to do, you know, strumming. Things like that. So a lot of beginner guitarists will feel really comfortable with a floppy pick. But bear in mind, if you're somebody who wants to get into the world of rock guitar playing and picking and, you know, shred guitar or anything like that, then a floppy pick like that is going to make it a lot more difficult for you to play intricate lines. Uh, so a thick pick uh, offers more resistance against the string. So when you're strumming, it doesn't make it quite as easy as the floppy pick did, but it will give you much more accuracy and it'll give you much more attack. The sound will be a bit louder. And uh, for things like this, when you're changing strings, the pick maintains its structure, it maintains its rigidity, so it doesn't change shape. So that is absolutely crucial um, for players that really seek accuracy and things like that. So do bear that in mind. Uh, so I would recommend if you are a beginner guitar player and you're looking to get into like rock guitar playing or anything which kind of requires uh, dexterity and technique, um, I wouldn't look at anything below one millimeter thickness. So I would go for something which is one millimeter and over. So anything between one and two millimeters will be a good average uh, kind of thickness to look for uh, for, a, for a guitar pick. The other thing to bear in mind is that guitar picks come in various shapes and sizes. Now this type of shape is a very average standard type of shape for a guitar pick. Um, I would really recommend you to wait until you develop your guitar technique before kind of experimenting with different shapes and sizes. This is kind of like that standard kind of teardrop shape. That's the kind of shape you want to go for, that kind of size. I wouldn't go for anything smaller than that or anything weird and wonderful just yet. Wait until you've developed your guitar technique before experimenting. Until now, or, or sorry, until then, um, just go for something which is between one and two millimeters thick and has that kind of shape. And you can't really go far wrong with stuff like that. Right, now it's time to take a look at holding the guitar pick. This is a very basic, fundamental part that you really want to try and get right at the very beginning if you can, okay? So let's talk about the standard, most basic way of holding a guitar pick. First things first, you are going to be holding the pick between the back of your thumb, which most people realize, and the side of your index finger, okay? This is where most people get confused. Most people think that you hold the pick between the back of your index finger and your thumb, like that. But you 
don't. It's the side of the index finger. So if you didn't have a pick there, your finger would be like a little hook there, and then you bring your thumb and you bring those together. And it kind of forms kind of a little circle like that. With that in mind, the pick goes there and it kind of just rests between the first knuckle of your finger and the, and the fingertip right there. So you put the back of the pick there and you bring the thumb across and you grip it right there, okay? That's where it goes. And um, you, you'll just want to kind of fidget with it and just shift it until it gets comfortable like that. And you've just got to find where it just feels natural for you. And um, different people have different ideas on how far down you should grip the pick. The general kind of thought is that it's better to grip the pick so that there is less of the point sticking out than if you gripped it right at the top and there's more of the point sticking out. Because the more of the pick you have sticking out, uh, the more resistance there is when you pick the strings and the pick actually kind of moves. The less of the pick that you grip, um, it stands to reason that the less um, the less control you're going to have over it when you add resistance to it. So that's why people grip it like about two thirds down. So when you do hit the strings, you have control of the pick. It doesn't move so much. Um, you are going to encounter things like the pick moving a little bit until you get used to it. Um, that's natural, you know, it might take a little while before you feel comfortable with this, but just please remember to use the side of that index finger. Now let's look at the um, possibility that you do uh, choose to pick like that, with the pick being held on the back of the finger, like that. Because um, there are some players out there that are able to do it, Okay, so I'm not saying it's bad, but um, you do want to give yourself the best shot at getting this right from the very beginning, so I do recommend you do that. But if you don't, um, basically what's going to happen is you're going to find it harder to keep the pick uh, steady, to keep it rigid, to keep it in place. Because when you uh, meet resistance, when you pick a string, there's too much chance for the finger joint to bend like that. So it's not a very steady uh, gripping position when you hit the string. It's, it's very uh, unstable, really. So let's pretend that um, I pick like this and um, I want to play some intricate lead lines. Right, now straight away, straight away my pick is getting tied up with the strings, it's not moving as efficiently as I want it to. Um, there's too much flex with my finger there, it's not enough rigidity, it's not very stable. So um, these are some of the problems that you can expect to encounter if you don't have a good picking position, okay? So it's worth getting it right from the very beginning. So let's have a look at those sort of lines with the pick in the right position. So. Right, so my pick wasn't moving so much. It was in a good, uh, solid position, and so when I'm changing strings or playing several notes in succession, my pick isn't moving in my fingers. It's not, you know, shifting around. So that is why most people recommend you hold the pick like that, between the side of the finger and the thumb. Uh, much more security of holding the pick there, right? So there you go. Now you know how to do it. There's no excuses for having any bad picking now. Okay, get to it.